Welcome to an exhibit of Jacob Landau's work, and I'm David Herstrom, uh, president of the Jacob Landau Institute, and I'm uh, really glad to be here and have this opportunity to talk about his work. Jacob Landau was a nationally and internationally known artist, very much known for his drawing and as a colorist as well. He uh, was born in 1917 and died in 2001 and created a, a, quite a reputation, had many of his works, uh, many, many shown in single person shows throughout the world, had his first show in, in Paris uh, in his early 30s and then went on to New York and had a uh, one man show there and uh, gained a lot of prizes, he won a Guggenheim Prize, he won a number of prizes along the way and uh, then also taught at, uh, along with his art, as very much part and parcel for him to be in the teaching in the classroom. So he taught uh, painting and uh, printmaking and drawing at Pratt uh, Institute in Brooklyn since uh, 1955. And then uh, he came to the end there and was a professor emeritus. So the teaching and the work, while he's gaining, he's winning uh, prizes for his work. He's also winning prizes as a teacher. He was an innovative and in some ways revolutionary teacher, breaking down the boundaries before all kinds of, of uh, disciplines and departments and whatnot on the one hand, and very experimental with the students. Well, he was also very experimental with his art and in doing the art. When growing up in the streets of Philadelphia, he was intrigued by the vendors in the streets. He was intrigued by the, the, the stairs coming down from the apartment, and he was intrigued by everything. And then he ended up, he ended up uh, going to the zoo a lot and his mother would encourage him early on uh, bring home butcher paper and spread it on the table in their one cramped apartment and he would draw on that butcher paper and then in high school he went on to uh, enter he was entered his work he was rather well known in the high school for his, his work even the time he was 16 and 17 and he had his work entered then in a national competition and he won the competition what was the the kicker to that was after the the principal under a get, send his work on the principal gets a call and say you know our judges have gone together and they've judged his work and they have found that you know like it turns out it's the same name that he's won first prize in this category first prize in that category first prize in this category and there's something wrong here and you have to know that uh, there's you know this this it's probably not the same person and he's probably plagiarized right etc and the, the the principal pauses and said Nope, that's our Jacob Landau. <laughs> this exhibit uh, is, there, it really does give a very, very good idea of the range that Jacob had. What all these uh, mainly prints, but the watercolors as well have in common is that he's obsessed with drawing and he's obsessed with the human figure. I mean, he's a uh, humanist artist, which for him means that you have a concern for what is human and the human is the principal concern. And it's as he, he was fond of saying, it's, it's not a style, style, it's an intention, it's a worldview, it's a way of looking at the world. That was what, and that's what his work reflects. At the same time, he had a tremendous range that uh, I think of it as on one hand, he uh, did uh, chamber music, you know, and on the other hand, he could do a symphony. Well, what you, what you see here in one of the, uh, the, what we call the prophet windows is uh, here we have Isaiah and we have Malachi. And in these, these are done right after he did a series of stained glass windows for Knesset Israel in Elkins Park, just outside of Philadelphia. And these are monumental windows. They're 20 feet high, five feet on a side. There's five of them on a side. When you walk into the sanctuary, you're just blown away by these things. And I think of this as a symphony in color and form. And even in the argument of them, it's called, it's called the, the prophet window windows, the, the quest, you know, the prophetic quest, and he follows that through those windows, and they're just very dramatic, and with the light coming through, there's amazing. The same time we have here, and these pourchoises, well, these pourchoises are watercolors that were done 
uh, taking off from those windows. They're based on the design of the windows. We did the windows first, and then so you get a little a little hint of what the color and the drama and the you know what's happening in these things. At the same time, you have the chamber music. And the perfect example, one of the perfect examples of that, one of his greatest, greatest works, to my mind, is the Holocaust Suite. And though Jacob was neither the son of a Holocaust survivor, nor, of course, a survivor himself, after the war, he was in World War II in the Italian theater, and he came back to New, back through Paris and then in New York, and he happened to meet with a group of Buchenwald survivors, and he never forgot it. That was just a, a threshold in his life. He crossed that threshold, and he said that the Holocaust is an incubus that sits on your shoulder like a demon, and it won't let you go. It never would let him go. The Holocaust suite is the outpouring of that, that it's, I think of him as an imaginative witness there. And it's a sense of the, the, the tragedy of it, but it's also a sense of the kind of humanist approach to the, the kind of triumph that it's, it's, a, it's going through hell at the same time, and we have and is obliged as a humanist to, to, and as a prophet in a way, to call your attention to it and say, look, you've got to witness this. This is something you have to look at. And he makes it visually so powerful that you do have to look at it. You may be attracted and repelled at the same time, but you have to look at it. And what's wonderful is it turns around and asks, you're used to questioning paintings, it turns around and asks you questions. And you're, stu you're, 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 held, you're held by it. But that's, that in its scope is like chamber music, that it has many voices, although this is visual, obviously, but it has that tightness and that amazing, you know, one of, one of uh, Jacob's gods was Beethoven, and he loved the, the late string quartets. And I could just see that, you know, strains of that in that, and the rhythms of, of the Holocaust. So the range is tremendous, you know, from this, this little beautiful little prince, okay, and just black and white, to these incredible, you know, symphony of color that just ablaze in the synagogue. As you can see, in looking at this work, you have, you have the, the working in miniature, you have the working in larger works, you have throughout the drawing, but there's an energy about it. There's a, there's a push-pull to it that it draws you in and it forces you out. It constantly, and, and this is one of the great things about uh, Jacob's work, is that it, it asks to be read. He always has a sense of the text and that reading, in other words, he asks you to attend to the work itself, to attend to what the images are doing to you. So we've seen that throughout uh, in this exhibit that he's done that and he comes back to drawing, drawing, drawing. Drawing is the foundation of everything. But in the satanic wheels, we have color. Color, just blazing color as some of the colors we saw at the very beginning in the, uh, in the prophet uh, Porchoise. That <clears throat> he comes back to it, it's a different color. This is, this is a, 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 here you see the delicacy of being a watercolorist. And there's, there's some irony to that because we come to the Satanic Wheels, which is his latest piece in here. It's early, early 90s. And uh, he was to die within 10 years. So it's very late in his life. And there's this, this beautiful profusion. It's like Matisse in the jazz sequence. You know, here Jacob comes out and there's a profusion of colors. And notice body still. What we see first, when we look at this, is these gorgeous, okay, they're wheels, but they're almost like, like rainbows, you know, you, you, you feel like you're, you're see, you have a vision of that. And then you see the title, you realize the title is Satanic Wheels. Wait a minute, you know, there's something else going on here. And of course, Satanic Wheels alludes to uh, William Blake's statement, uh, phrase, the Satanic Wheels in the early 19th century in England. He's bemoaning the fate of so many of the people from the countryside who come in and have been industrialized. And they're in sweatshops all over London and they're dying. And then the wheels of war have geared up with the French and they're afraid the France is gonna, going to invade them, and here we have those satanic wheels. It's about our industrial, industrial military complex. It's about these kinds of things. And yet, we have this wonderful color. Well, at the same time, we're drawn into it by just the form and the rhythm of the form and the beautiful colors and the delicacy of line and the boldness at the same time as some of that line. We're repulsed by, if we look at these bodies closely, we see that, wait a minute, these bodies are isolated in space. 
They're, they're cut off from human life. They're cut off from community. So you have this, this push-pull, this tremendous one to pull you in, draw you out. And, and it's part of the whole emotional experience of seeing a Jacob Landau work. And as a humanist, he said, I love, I love uh, this quote. He says, I'm interested in art as advocacy of the human, as revelation of the tragic and hope of transcendence. So you have the color and you have the drawing and what an artist does and being able to capture you emotionally, there's the hope of transcendence. It maybe will make a difference in your life. At the same time, it, he's very much aware of the tragic dimensions of our life and the tragic choices that we make as individuals and as communities, and that always informs the work. But here is the hope of transcendence as well.